Okay, we're going to talk about troubleshooting some inventory issues. Everybody knows that uh, QuickBooks, if your inventory goes negative, it's going to skew your COGS. And since QuickBooks is, does not have hard posts, you can always go back and and uh, fix your inventory before it goes negative. And you want to do that, okay? You never want to see any negative numbers in QuickBooks. Um, QuickBooks 2012 helps a lot with that because it does allow you to have transactions separate, you know, your bill and your item receipt as two separate transactions. But we're going to go ahead into, you know, just basic troubleshooting of inventory uh, from things that happened in the past, the most common mistake. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run my balance sheet. And once I pull this up, and we're gonna run it just for the end of the month for now. Notice here, I have my inventory valuation in here, 229.75, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and run my inventory valuation summary as of 1031. Now in theory, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> This asset value of 754 should tie out to my balance sheet right here as of that date because this is where my inventory asset is, right? And this is telling me my inventory asset value. Now, if that doesn't tie out, there's a couple things that we need to take a look at. The first and most obvious is you need to look and see in your inventory asset, are there any transactions in here that shouldn't be? So a bill, obviously, that's going to raise inventory. An invoice, that's going to lower inventory. Credit memo, raise inventory. Invoice, lower, bill. Build assemblies, that's going to affect inventory. Okay, But if there are any journal entries in here, maybe, that somebody posted a journal entry to inventory, um, that's something that can go against this. A check that's written straight to, so if somebody writes a check straight to inventory, that's going to affect it because that is not going to show up on this inventory valuation sheet, okay? Because this is just going to pull items that have inventory associated with it. So that's the first thing to check, easiest thing to check. The next thing, it's also pretty easy in my mind, but it's important to note. So we're going to go into our items list here and we want to look at our inactive items. And we're going to go ahead and maybe just, you know, sort by inactives, look at them. Okay, so notice here how I have an inactive item that has a total applied to it or a total quantity on hand. And if I look into it, I'm assuming also it has a value. Okay, so on this inventory valuation summary sheet here, notice the inventory item is LK doorknobs and that doesn't show up on the sheet. That's because this inventory valuation summary sheet does not pull inactive items. So one of the things that is great to do is to go look at your items list, look at all the inactive items, and make sure that none of those have inventory quantities nor values associated with it. Okay, So if it does, you might want to be sure, check, should this really be inactive? Okay, this has a negative quantity. I'm guessing it's probably a really old item. So I probably want to just go in and adjust it out. So what you want to do there, you go up to vendors, inventory activities, adjust. All right, so I'm going to adjust it as of 1031. Of course, as I mentioned before, you truthfully want to adjust it before it ever went negative. So it went negative on 518. So if you're not going to affect prior year books, you might want to go back and adjust it as of, you know, 5-1 so that it never goes negative. However, if it's gone negative for years in the past, you just want to pick a hard date when you're going to adjust it. Most people adjust it at that point against equity, um, but you might need to run it through the P&L. It's something you need to talk to your CPA about or whoever's preparing your taxes, okay? So... I'm going to go ahead and, and adjust the uh, an, the item here. Now notice if I type LK, it's not going to pull up because it is inactive. All right, so a couple things with that. First, you can just come in here, make it active, go adjust it, and then come back and make it inactive. But let's say you have hundreds of items. All right, so the first thing you're actually going to want to do is you're actually going to want to go in and export your list to IIF file, your item list, before you make anything 
act, active again. So I'm going to leave this as inactive. So I'm going to go in Utilities, Export, List to IAF Files, Export my item list, OK. Save it to my desktop as items. All right, I'm going to replace the existing one. OK, it's been exported. Now I can go into that item list there. So let's go into Excel. All right, and first of all, I'm going to open and go to my all files on my desktop. Notice I have to go to all files because it's a .iif file, it's not an Excel file. So let's find that here, items, open it up. So first thing first, I'm going to save it as something different now because I want to keep this items with those inactive items marked as inactive uh, so that I, once I'm finished with uh, cleaning it up, I can just re-import the sheet and it'll make all those inactive again. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. The reason for doing that again is you have a whole bunch of inactive items right now and after we're done adjusting them, we want to be able to make them inactive again. So right now they're inactive according to this IAF file. And if I go in and make them active and fix them, I can then re-import this IAF file and it'll inactivate them for me. So I'll show you. Okay, so I'm just going to say save as, and again, save it to my desktop as items changed. IIF. Okay. So on this one, items changed. I'm going to go in and take a look at, first of all, I'm going to delete these top, these top rows here because I don't need them. It starts with the inventory item area that I need there. And I'm going to scroll on over to where it talks about if it's hidden. And I'm going to make all of them hidden, no. So is it hidden? No. N, all right? The Y, that's hidden. If I go over and look at the side here, there's the mileage. And if I find, let's find the other Y over here. Here's another Y and another Y. So let's go take a look at which item this is. Uh, job materials. Okay. We would find eventually the one that we had just made inactive. Um, let's find it. Okay. All right, I guess I didn't export the same list. Let's try and re-export that again. Okay, so we go in here, utilities, export list IF files. All right, and I'm gonna choose my items list. Okay, and we're gonna put it to items save, replace it. Yes, that's probably what I did incorrectly there. So let's try this one again. Open up the items list again. All right. And now let's see if it has the correct items here. There's my LK doorknobs. And if I scroll over to the side, it's going to say, is it inactive? Yes. Or is it hidden? Yes. All right. So I want to change. I'm going to save this as. And I'm going to save it as items changed. IF. I'm going to replace the other one. Okay. So now, since this is the one I'm going to mark all the changes on, okay, so I'm going to go in, and again, this is not very helpful with when I just have a single item that's inactive, but let's just pretend like the single is hundreds of them, okay? So I'm going to go into my hidden accounts or my hidden column and just double click on this little box to copy it down. And it's going to copy down N to all of my items there. All right. So what that's going to do then is I'm going to save this. Yes. And I'm going to go back into QuickBooks here and say import my IIF files. And I'm going to import my items changed. Now when it imports this, notice what it's going to do is it's going to make that active and any of the other items active that had been marked inactive previously. Okay, so what that'll let me do now is when I go adjust the quantity value on hand, I can go in there and say LK, so it now pulls it up, and my new quantity is going to be zero. It's going to have a value adjustment of 
and 25 cents. I have to decide where I want to adjust it against. Again, this should be something that you speak with your accountant about what you're going to, you're going to adjust that value against because it's obviously something from the history that was never fixed. Okay. So I'm going to fix it, put it to ask my accountant for now. You can choose a customer job class. I'm going to say save and close. All right. So you adjusted all of your inventory items um, so that they were now not having a quantity or a value. Now, if I go look at my inventory valuation sheet, I've got 754 on there. I look at my balance sheet, 754. It now ties out. I don't have any negative uh, or inactive inventories with a value or a quantity in them. All right. Now, to mass remake them inactive, I'm going to go back to that original uh, IF file I exported and import it. So I'm going to import this items IIF and all that's going to do now is going to take all of my original items that were hidden with Y, you know, yes, they were hidden. And it's going to make them hidden again. Okay. So notice now you don't see that LK on here. And if I show my inactive items, it shows up here as inactive. Just a quick little way to fix your uh, inventory asset being off from your inventory valuation sheet. 